Hello everyone and welcome to the Score Esports' post-TI5 wrap-up show. My name is Matt Demers and with me are three of our Dota experts from the Score's newsroom. I'm here with Dennis Gonzalez, Connor Dunn, Annabelle Fisher. We are here to break down possibly one of the best tournaments of this year. One, two, three. <laughs> We have to talk a little bit about CDEC, and I know it's maybe not good form to kind of talk about the loser and just being like, okay, what did they do wrong? But we saw just such a, a meteoric rise from this team. Annabelle, I just wanted to, to ask you, like, what what do you think kind of changed? Like, were they just unable to adapt, or like, what happened in that grand final? For, do you think anyway? You know, I think they played almost as well as EG, and it really just came down to. I mean, it was it was really close. You know, I don't think they made a mistake per se. They just were outplayed and outdrafted by PPD. And A couple days ago, when I was watching e C CDEC go undefeated through the winner's bracket, I was thinking to myself, wow, these guys are mechanically strong, aggressive. His rotation's out before he's even level six. He's a safe lane carry. He should be farming. No, he shouldn't be. He's teleporting in with his gyrocopter and getting a double kill somewhere else on the map. I he think we saw that we saw that during the group stages, because I remember it was a pre-six storm spirit. Um, teleporting down to be part of a rotation and you're sitting there and you're like storm spirits major kit comes online at level six but this here's a guy that needs to be part of that getting more kills that kind of stuff and i guess yeah. you were continuing the, the thing I, I i noticed was in that final match uh that eg had figured figured them out and as soon as i started to watch eg figure them out i realized c deck only actually have one strategy hmm. they're kind of like they just have that one aggressive early game push and if that fails where do they ha what what do they have I mean, that's just an interesting contrast between the teams, though, is because we've been talking about that, you know, Evil Geniuses, they lost to them, lost to CDEC, got sent to the loser's bracket, but they were able to come back and actually, like, adapt and say, okay, this is a really aggressive team. They like, you know, five manning around, and we need to be able to logically take a step back when we see these, you know, threatening circumstances, avoid the fights, take the fights that, you know, are good for us. But it's almost interesting that CDEC weren't able to make the same transition with the techies and be like, okay, we've taken some time, we've looked at the, the other games that you've played this tournament, and, and we come up with a logical, a logical like counter or a logical strategy that works against the techies. So is that just the difference between teams that you know one was able to adapt and one one wasn't? Well, Dennis? I don't know if it was even a case of where um, having the or trying to counter the techies pick was even something that they even considered. I think um, they had such a short time frame to try to come up with a counter um, that it wasn't even feasible. I think it was too much of a risk to even let the techies go unbanned through the first phase. Just because during the grand finals, if they happen to let it through in one game, that's pretty much an automatic win for EG just because they can't deal with it. But I think they made an adjustment uh, in, the, in game two when they were running the Broodmother mid. Mm. Um, not, it's not the first time that we've seen it for this event, but it's, it's something that definitely threw EG off their game. And I think arguably it, it won them that game. And I'm surprised that they didn't run something similar. Mm. I was actually really surprised by that that game too that CDEC actually won because Aggressive took Queen of Pain in the off lane, their normal off laner, XZ, took the Brood mid, <laughs> and then their, their usual mid laner, Shiki, took the left track, I think it yeah. was, in the safe lane carry position. Yeah. And for me, Sumail wasn't having that much of a tough time mid lane. He was actually farming a lot more because he was power shotting all the spiderlings. So, mm -hmm. Um, I was expecting EG to actually take that game. I was really surprised that uh, CDEC took it. Hmm. So we're kind of seeing a, a little bit of versatility from CDEC, but it kind of just didn't like, it didn't like click. I know well, that they got, they kind of went into that Slark pick in the third game that didn't that we thought was going to be a huge like deal. I remember a yeah. lot of us being like, "There's no way they're going to stop that Slark." But yeah. and I think the thing is, EG had a day to prepare, hmm. whereas C CDEC had to adapt through the match, and that's not enough time. That's not enough time to study and react to what your opponents are doing. So um, yeah, props to PPG.